getting not his benefits. We stand in awe. We stand in awe of your wonders, Jesus. You do wonders every day, Jesus. Of you, Jesus. Of you. My name is Evans and this is my testimony. I want to testify on how God has changed and saved me from a life of fornication, a life of drinking, a life of uselessness. You know, so I remember going to secondary school you know, in, somewhere in 2012. I joined a bad group. I didn't meet the right friends. And then and it led to a life of following friends, bad friends, drinking alcohol, you know, eating weed, drinking weed tea, and it was too much. Had a lot of girlfriends, bad friends, didn't study in school, you know, did a lot of bad things, you know, till like at a point I was very depressed, you know, very sad. But I used to remember that. Anytime I, I, I come home from town, I see my name pasted on a wall. And then my elder brother, who is a pastor in the church, will be praying for me. I used to hear him praying for me so much. You know, but I didn't see it as anything serious. You know, but then I continued living my life till the sin advanced that I entered into internet fraud. And I used to browse, I used to have clients who send me money every Friday. You know, I, I had money. I, I even send it sometimes I send my brother tight to pay for me. The one day I was I was I was staying at Choco. I used to work in a guest house. And then in the, in the late in the night, I, I don't know how but I tuned my radio to sweet melodies. Then I heard Bishop Dark preaching in one of the days. Listening to the man, I became very interested in the message. And then the following day I went back to listen to the message again. And I kept listening. I kept listening so much that at the point, I had my own makane. Even though I was in the world, I was listening to the makane. Even though I was in the world, I had my own podcast, listening to almost all the messages. Then I realized that the things I was doing, it was coming down. Then the sin was coming down. But then I was not going to church. Till another day, my brother invited me to church. But I followed him to church. Then, I think after service, service was, I, I really enjoyed the service. After service, I complained that the bus didn't move early. So I, I gave him a strong warning that I will not come to this church again. You know, but I woke up the following week wanting to come. You know, and I kept coming, I kept coming. I remember so much that you know, my life got so changed. And I got so transformed. At the point I sent, I even sent the call of God on my life. You know, I went to the Bible school in 2019. And I tried to make myself useful, useful to God because of the call. And then after Bible school, I was advised to go back to the university because the life I lived, I couldn't have continued to the university. You know, and then by the grace of God, I'm almost done with the university. And then also by the grace of God, I've been appointed as a pastor in the church. And then I have a congregation, I have people I speak to. And then the boy who used to be useless in the area, the boy who used to be a bad boy, the boy who, I mean, who used to do a lot of bad things, now has influence, now speaks to people and they listen, now leads people to Christ. He's now a pastor. When I was in school, I had a very profane nickname that I can't even mention in the camera. But God has been good and then everything has changed. So I want to encourage everybody in this church that people really change. And if I can change, everybody can change. And I also want to thank Bishop Dagwood knows that may he continue to do the good works that he's doing. You know, and then his ministry is really affecting lives. His ministry is really changing people. 
and when we get to heaven that's when he will know the impact of what he did on earth the 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 intensity and then the weight of what he has come to do on earth god bless you all If you call my name, I will answer a billion times. I am a soldier at the battlefield, waiting to hear the voice of my commander. Oh, Jesus, if you call my name, I will answer a billion times. Hey! I am a soldier at the battlefield, waiting to hear the voice of my commander. Oh, Jesus, if you call my name, I will answer a billion times. Who is calling my name? Oh, Jesus is calling my name. Oh, Jesus, if you call my name, I will answer a billion times. Who is calling my name? Oh, Jesus is calling my name. Oh. Jesus, if you call my name, I will answer. Let me hear. Hey! Jesus, yes, Jesus. 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 King D music. Yeah, 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 yeah. Moses Blitz. No sooner, yeah, I'm a kingdom believer. Yeah, I was born in America, but my roots come from Africa. I dance to the rhythm of love, set my blood. No chains holding me, it's because of Jesus.
Everybody put your one hand up If you know, say you know, no defeat I'm a winner, I'm a winner, I'm a winner Put your one hand up If you know, say you cannot be stuck I'm a winner, I'm a winner Doesn't matter what the situation Go say you go tell you Make this bold confession In the face of Wahana God is the Masahido He will never leave us And I'm an overcome I don't know the feet oh. Everything I do Every word I say Everything I touch I trust that we know With God on my side I'm a winner, I'm a winner, I'm a winner Come rain or shine I will be on top I'm a winner, I'm a winner, I'm a winner I'm winning in the morning Winning in the afternoon or night I'm a winner, I'm a winner, I'm a winner My cup overflows with power In the name of Jesus
come here, come here, come here. Please bring me a table, eh? I need to mark these papers as soon as possible. Because. Belen Ronko? Say, say. Don't have your time to waste, though. Hurry up and put these things down. Look, be smart, eh? You're a young lady. How many times have I told you? Eh? Belen Ronko? Sorry, sir. Look, eh, I need to get some things done first in the common room. So I need you to stay with these papers for me. Make sure that nobody, eh, I repeat, nobody comes close to any of these exam papers. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Nobody should cite it, even you. Sir, but I can't. I can't. Hey, but I'm wrong. Yes, sir. I said what? No, nobody Nobody. Should. Okay, I'll be back. Sir. But I'm wrong. Sir, but it's break time, oh. And so, so I'll, I'll watch the papers. Better for you. Excuse me. Yo, Charlie, get Charlie, Charlie, I get everything. I pay everything, so we, we are set. Hold on. The new girl. She be fine. She be my type. She what hey, type? Hey, wait. What's so, up? Huh. Hold this. Wait for me. What's for the? Hello. Hi. Can I help you? Uh, it's more of what I can do to help you, you know? <laughs> you? Yeah. How? Um, I was thinking, you know, the new girl, not much friends, and just following up here to up and down, you know? <laughs> so? Uh, can we be, or can I be your... <laughs> be my what? Uh, steady partner. <laughs> <laughs> listen. I'm Sly, listening. or whatever you call it. You know the so. name, right? Sly. Isn't... <laughs> Francis Agbetua, hey, you know your name. That's my father's name. Mine is Sly. Listen, listen, listen. The point is, I've heard all about you and your group of friends. You yes. should. Mm, yes. By now you should. In fact, I heard you used to be part of the top three. And now... Used to be? Yes, used to be. And now when we're looking for you, we can only find you in the bottom three. So you know what? Oh. I really don't think you have anything to offer. And I don't want to be your steady partner. Relax. Thank you. Let's assume what they're saying is true. You know, we can help each other. And you, I hold your hands. And we get to the top. I'll be at one, you'll be at two. Or do you want to be at one? Hey. <laughs> I bet you, Amido. Sly. So, assuming I accept whatever this is. Just say yes. First of all, we'll have to exchange numbers, right? To keep in touch. Okay. And then during prep, we'll have to sit together. Right? So that we can learn. Okay. And then after prep, you'll be like, oh, let me escort you back to your dormitory. Right? I'm a gentleman. Mm. And then when we get to the dormitory, you'll be like, oh, can I get a hug? And then there'll be this awkward silence. And then our lips would accidentally meet. Right? That would be a bonus if it happens. <laughs> and then the next day, you'll come and be like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. It was a mistake. Expecting me to be like, oh, I know, it's fine, right? Hey. Agbeto Amido. Sly. And then during vacation, you would invite me to your house under the pretense of a steady partner. And then when we are all alone, we will get all touchy-feely, right? Hey. Agbeto Amido. Sly. And then when we come back to school, I'll finally ask you, oh, so what are we? And then you, then you will tell me, Oh, but we are only having fun. I mean, we are only steady partners, right? Pinning the responsibility on me, whether to stop this nonsense or to allow you to continue using me, right? Uh, can we forget it? I bet And then you will eventually start dating another girl in my class, leaving me all depressed, confused, so that I will drop from the top three to the bottom three, just like you, right? Uh, for, forget it, okay. Listen to me very carefully, Mr. Albert Swamido. Sly. I don't want this small conversation here to destroy my entire future. Mm. I don't want to be your steady partner. Look at you. You are such a joke. Excuse me. Baby, come hey. down. <laughs> close your mouth, close your mouth. Close your mouth. <sighs> I'm the vibe scatter. Allow me to do this. Charlie. The girl give me show down. Shall it's time to go. Look sharp, I beg, look stay on the door. Let me change this exam paper quickly. This one to fuck up, okay? Right? Oh. Where's, where's my paper crying? Oh. Jesus. 
so, so sweet. Yes. Yes, I get it. <laughs> Zero to hero. <laughs> Do that. Ah, but you used to be a good boy, Francis. But we don't. Say, Sly. Hey. Now this is what you've been up to. Hmm. Hey. I thought you were among the top three students in this class. One of the very best students you've ever had. Now you are failing so much that we have to turn the paper upside down before we see you at the top three. Francis, but we don't. Sly. Hmm. I see. What does the Bible tell us in 1 Corinthians 15, 33? Eh? It says, do, do not, not be deceived. deceived. <laughs> Bad company corrupts good morals. Yeah, I remember. Yes. You see, a lot of people are deceived into thinking the kind of people they associate themselves with will not have an effect on them. Ooh. But you see, God is not mocked. Francis Zagbert, what do Sly. Look, I am going to punish you for this. And I'm going to take you to the headmaster. Oh, sir, I you beg understand. you. Sir, let's settle it here, I beg you. Oh, we should settle it. Oh, oh, Look, <laughs> don't let me take you. Listen, read this book. I read a chapter, chapter five, on bad company. Thank you, sir. You understand? Yeah, I understand. Francis Agbert, what me do? Sly. Yes. <laughs> You're serious. Mr. Come Petrus. on. You're oh, yes. still going to the headmaster. Oh, I'm not reading the book. I don't care what you are reading. Francis Agbert, what me do? Sly, please. Oh, sir, I beg you. Come on. Sir, please. Come on, serious. Wow. Oh, let's give it up for Let's give it up for them. Francis Agbetomenyo. Sly. Amen. I have a question for us today. How many of us here believe we are honest people? Honest, show by hands, show by hands. Honest people. Oh, I, yeah. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I have a question, all right? Do honest people rob God? Mm. Malachi chapter 3, verse 8. Do honest people rob God? But you rob me day after day. This is God speaking now. In case you don't know, this is God speaking. Malachi chapter 3 verse 8. God is asking you, do honest people rob God? And he's also saying that you rob him day after day. And I know that as you are sitting here, you're asking yourself that me, dear, small boy like me. As I'm I don't even join dancing stars. As I'm in church, I don't even do anything. I'm just, I'm just around. How then do I rob God? They give me 20 cities, I come to you, I pay 5 cities, and I go, my how, how then do I rob God? How then do you rob God? And God knows that this is the question you are asking. And he's saying that you rob him in the tithe and the offerings. Look up, look up. The exclamation mark over there is saying that God is angry. He's vexed at you. That you come to church and then you keep your tithe. And then you keep the offerings because you haven't given it to him. And then he's vexed. How many of you want God to be vexed at you? Tell your neighbor, don't let God be vexed at you. Oh, say it again. In here, don't let God be vexed at you. And now you are under a curse. There are a whole lot of you because you are robbing me. Bring your full tithe to the temple treasury so there will be ample provision in my temple. Test me in this and see if I do not open, open up heavens itself to you and pour out blessings beyond your wildest dreams. Say wildest dreams. Yeah, I know some of you have very, very wild dreams. You know, today I asked, I asked some of my members, members, <laughs> I asked some of my members, what is uh, their wildest dream? Okay. And one of the guys said that he, he's a footballer. Okay. So his wildest dream is that he will score the winning goal for Ghana in the World Cup final. 
Well, me, I, I, you know, generally speaking, I don't think that is possible. You know, but that's his wildest dream. Eh? That's his wildest dream. Like, a, a wild dream is a dream that it doesn't make sense. It's wild. Like, the word there is wild. And that, that's his wildest dream. So, uh, and, okay, okay. Do you want to know mine? Do you want to know mine? Oh, you don't want to know? <laughs> okay. My wildest dream, okay, is that, is that, I will have a very big church with a very big parking lot with only Rolls Royce. Yeah, and it, it should be white. It should be white. If it's not white, don't bring it. If it's not white, don't bring it. That's my wildest dream. And you see, God said that He's going to bless you beyond your wildest dream, provided you pay your full tithe. Tell your neighbor, full tithe. It has to be full, not in half. Mm. So if they have sent you 300 cities this week and I come to pay 20 cities, it's not. Yeah, some of you, they've sent you 100, uh, 300 cities and uh, you have spent the money and uh, right now it's left with 10 cities. And you're thinking about it. How then do I go back? But anyways, how many of you want God to bless you beyond your wildest dreams? Beyond your wildest dreams. Now take out a powerful offering. A very powerful offering. It's an offering for wild dreams. An offering for wild dreams. Amen. Put your hands into your, your purse, you know, where the money is. Our beautiful airport stars are here. Oh, give it up for them. Say, wow. Are they not beautiful, eh? All right. So let us, let us be, <clears throat> lift up our hands. We are praying. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this seed. The Bible says that you give the seed to the sower. Lord, even as we sow our seed, we pray that you bless us beyond our wildest dreams. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let us rise up and come and tap, tap, tap the basket. Say tap, tap. If it is physical, put it inside, inside. Yeah, those at the back, I see you coming. I've been a Christian for so many years. Oh, I see you too, I see you. God bless you, Bishop. Wow. Hey, there are lots of black shirts today. Oh. oh, keep on coming, keep on coming, keep on coming. Wildest dreams. Wild, wild dreams. Know that if you keep the money, you are robbing God. Mm -hmm. Don't rob God. Otherwise, angels will catch you and beat you. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Roland. Keep clapping, keep clapping, keep coming. Beautiful, beautiful. God is blessing us beyond our wildest dreams. Hallelujah. Keep coming. All the way. Even if you gave by mobile money, come and tap the basket. Beautiful. 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 God bless you. God bless you for giving. Father, we thank you for these offerings in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you so much, Epostas. I believe it's time to receive the Greater Love Gospel Choir. Let's put our hands together for the Greater Love Gospel Choir.
keep it to myself I kind of go out and tell somebody I can't keep it to myself Somebody's lost, somebody's dying Can't keep it to myself Gotta tell somebody else For they got to know Jesus loves them so Just don't keep it to yourself You gotta go out and tell somebody Don't keep it to yourself Somebody's lost, somebody's dying Don't keep it to yourself Gotta tell somebody else For they got to know Jesus loves them so We all have friends that Cry and cry cause they don't even know There's a God who is willing to help them bear the load They don't know that He cares And He'll see them through their darkest nights How will they find God? There's a God above who really understands He can heal broken hearts If you just Give him a chance I must go We must go And let them know I can't keep it to myself I gotta go out and tell somebody I can't keep it to myself Somebody's lost, somebody's dying Keep it to myself I gotta tell somebody else For they got to know Jesus loves them so We all have friends that Cry and cry Cause they don't even know There's a God who is willing To help them bear the load they don't know that He cares And He'll see them through their darkest nights How will they find out There's a God above who really understands He can heal broken hearts If they just give Him a chance I must go we must go and let them know I can't keep it to myself I've got to go out and tell somebody I can't keep it to myself Somebody's lost, somebody's dying I can't keep it to myself I've got to tell somebody you can't hear me I said amen okay now just the people under the balcony can I have an amen no you see it sounds very weak under the balcony amen okay under the balcony please stand to your feet please stand to your feet okay you see you see you see some people there so it shows you are not even listening to me okay now under the balcony wave at me wave at me uh, God bless you. 
Okay, it's time for the word of God. And usually, you are the last to stand up. So today, I want to encourage you to stand up first. Amen. It's time for the word of God. Are you excited? Now, today is a special day. Well, can can you let the people come in? Open the open more doors. Pastor Joel, can you help? This it seems to be a blockade at the back. I don't know what's going on. Amen. Today is a special day. I don't want to tell you why it's special. I'm going to allow Prophet to tell you himself why it's special. But you are in for a treat. Amen. Now, when you say you are in for a treat, it means you are. You should expect something nice to happen, okay? In case you want to presec. In case you want to presec, in for a treat means like something nice is about to happen to you. Amen. So, I want you to relax. Today is going to be an experience. It's not, it's not going to be much more than a service. It's going to be an experience. Amen or no amen? Yes. It's going to be like a honeymoon. When you're... You know, when you're on honeymoon, there's no schedule. Like, at 8 o'clock, we'll do this. And then at 10 o'clock, we'll do this. Then we, we take a break at 1. And then you just flow. That's why we say, that's why we say, I want the honey. I, I, I can't sing it. I forgot how to say it. I, I, I want the honeymoon to go on. I want the honeymoon to go on and on. On and on, on and on, and on, and on. I'm praying for. Oh, tell it. Why are you testing me on stage? One more time. I want the honeymoon to go on. I want the honeymoon to go on. It sounds like something my friends used to smoke weed to, but it's a spiritual song. On and on, on and on. Bishop Henry, you don't look like, like something is going on. You look very serious. Oh God, I want this <laughs> wow. So we want today, what we are singing is, I want church to go on and on, on and on, on and on, and on. Are you ready for something that's going to go on and on and on and on and on and on? And on? So if you are as excited as I am to find out what the experience is, Let's sing that nothing is impossible, which means anything can happen. Yes, you don't know what's going to happen today. So let's sing nothing is impossible as we bring our prophet up to the stage. Everybody singing nothing is impossible. It's impossible when you put your trust in God. Nothing is impossible. When you're trusting in His Word I can to the voice of God to thee Is there anything to harm me? Then put your trust in God alone And rest upon His Word For everything For everything Oh everything Yes, everything is possible Come on, first lovers, help me sing. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible when you're trusting in His words. I can do the voice of God to be. Is there anything too hard for me? Then put your trust. In God alone and rest upon His word for everything, oh everything, yes, everything is possible. Ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome to the first of experience. Put your hands together as we welcome our pastor, Hallelujah. Bishop Doug Hewitt Mills. Hallelujah! Wow. Let us, let us pray. Father which art in heaven, thank you for this moment, this time, 
We ask you to guide us by your mighty Holy Spirit. Let your will be done. Lead us by your Spirit into all truth. All of your word, all of your ways. We are grateful, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Beautiful. I love you too. Right. Now, we are working very hard for Jesus. Amen. Are you ready to continue working hard for Jesus? Thank God. This morning, I want to share with you about suffering, losing, sacrificing. I want to share with you about the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. Matthew 16, 24. And let us read from verse 22. Matthew 16. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Now, but let's read from verse 21. From that time forth, Jesus began to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Amen. So Jesus was supposed to suffer many things from pastors, that is, elders and chief priests. Chief priests are senior clergy men and scribes. Scribes are people who write, writers, specializing in defamation. Slanderers. He was supposed to suffer many things from this group that we see in the Bible. All right? And then he was to be killed in addition to suffering at the hands of these people. The suffering wasn't that he would be killed, he was to suffer at their hands. Then after that, he was to be killed. And then be raised again on the third day. All right? Now, so Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Never be it far from thee. God forbid, this shall not be unto thee. Amen. But he turned and said unto him, Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Now, Satan was not the chief priest's. You see, you'd have thought that Satan would be the chief priest who, whom he was going to suffer at their hands. 
But that was not the Satan. The Satan was the Peter who was trying to prevent the suffering. Isn't that fantastic? How many find it fantastic? You would have thought that he would have said, Satan, that chief priest or that clergyman is the Satan. No. The one who was trying to prevent it was the one called Satan. He said, Satan, uh, Peter, get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. And so you see that when it comes to the things of God, God thinks differently from the way we think. Verse 24. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man, any man, will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Amen. So, I don't know if Keziah can still sing the song, Take Up Thy Cross. I hope she got the words right in case we need it. Is she there? Find her. <laughs> Lest I have to sing it myself. But let's, let's go back to verse 22. Then Peter, no, no, verse uh, 21, sorry. From that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples how he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things. He must. Now, the greater your ministry the greater the suffering and the lesser your ministry the lesser the suffering so Jesus Christ to accomplish the will of God had to suffer with the cross so, there are various ways to suffer, just as there are various ways to torture somebody. One of the ways they torture is what they call waterboarding. And they put you in the water and bring you out just as you are about to breathe the water and back in and out. And I understand it is a very terrifying experience. Another way, they put you out in the snow. And while you stand in the snow, they take a teaspoon of water and then they pour over your head. They keep pouring the water over your head which will become ice as it is flowing over you to see how long you can stay. Another way is to remove your nails. All your nails. Hmm? In France, 
one of the ways the Germans, when they caught um, a collaborator, you know, they had the, the French, the res resistance. How do you say it in French? Resistance. resistance. Yes. La resistance. They had to resist the Germans because Germans had taken over the whole of France. And they, they resisted them. And so, but they would bow to them and greet them publicly. But they were resisting. They would blow up their offices and sabotage the railways and all kinds of things to resist the Germans. If they caught you, they had a helmet they put on your head. And then they screw it. And as they screw, it gets tighter until it, it, it cracks. It, it cracks the skull. Oh, yes. There, there are many ways. Another way was they would tie one leg to a rope, to one car, one leg to this motorcycle, one hand to this car, motorcycle, and one arm to this one. Do you see? Or to a horse each. And then everybody go. Oh, yes. Different ways. Another way was to bury you alive with only your head up. So your head, like if it's on the floor here, you see your head out like a, like a cabbage. Here, 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 here. And then when they put you in the ground, they will have about 10 riders, horses. And then they gallop this way. Yes. If it misses, it goes and then it comes back. I mean, assortment of inventions. And there, there is a museum in, in London called Madame Tussauds. They used to show, I don't think it's there anymore, but they used to show the different methods of torture that they've ever used before. Different. Pray about it. That is why many of them had cyanide capsules. When you capture them, they just chew because it's better, it's better to die than to some of the things they, they do to the people. Oh, yes. Now, in the same way, there are different ways a person suffers. When you are serving God, there are different ways by which you suffer. Because suffering is like that. Suffering has, um, suffering has versions and variations and types by which you suffer. Yes. So, solitary confinement, for instance, seven feet by ten feet. I'm six feet, so seven feet this way. So I'm six, so this is seven. That's the length of the, the width times 10 feet. 10 feet is here. That's the size. And you stay with only concrete walls. And you see no human being. You don't know whether it's day or night. Yes, we have that. We have only tiredness where you stand. You do not sit. Just to stand. Oh, yes. No, the wall is here. 
You can't sit. But you only stand. No one will beat you. You just stand. Yes. All these are inventions of human beings. And variations of means to torture people. And I'm explaining to you that when it comes to following Christ, there are many things that ways by which you can suffer. Acts chapter 9 verse let's look at verse 15. Then the Lord said that he spoke to the prophet go thy way or no let's read from verse 11. The Lord said arise and go into the street which is called straight and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul. For behold, he prayeth and had seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he has done to thy saints. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on your name. But the Lord said to him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Verse 16. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So, to be, to be called and to be chosen will always involve some kind of suffering. Like what I was trying to explain, various types of things induce suffering till you know what it is. Someone I knew who used to fight in the Lebanese. I don't know whether he was in it. I don't think he was Hezbollah, but he was in the Lebanese war. He said to me, his brother was caught by the enemy. And what they did to him, and they put him in a, in a, in a car, in a bus or a truck, and send them back to them. He said when he saw the brother, the, the brother took a gun and shot his brother because it was too much. I don't want to tell you what they did because he told me, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it. Yes. So there are different ways by which God takes us through some. You are not Christ, so you may not die on any cross. Even these days, we don't have crosses. <laughs> they are all jewelry now. The cross is now jewelry, jewelry. A piece of jewelry. But there are different ways by which you suffer. So, you must expect suffering. And it is because People are not prepared to suffer that people don't work for God and people don't fast. Fasting must return. There must be fasting. Tell your neighbor, we are going to fast. As a lifestyle. Yes. So fasting may be the type of suffering that you will be expected to go through. You may not have to die on the cross, but it will be something for you to experience. And this is the reality. When James McKeown 
James McEwan, who came to Ghana, there was a prophecy. Somebody called him and told him, you, you will be a missionary in Africa. And he told him, listen, I've not, I've not heard of any such calling to my life. Yes. He, he was told with somebody at a meeting. He said, no, 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 no. I haven't received such a calling. But after some time, he came and owned up and said, I've accepted it. I'll go. And when they were going to send him to Ghana, he was coming to Ghana. They delayed his coming to Ghana by one year because they were, uh, they said they were, they didn't have a house for him to stay. So they were preparing his accommodation. So after one year, he got on the ship and came to Ghana. When he arrived straight to Asamankesi. Oh yes. And when they got there, the house was not ready. Yes, after one year of preparation. <laughs> so they said, they put him in a, a type of house which they described in the book that I read as a compound house. It was a compound house to share with everybody. Straight from Europe, 1937. Oh, yes. Different experiences for different people. But the first thing, verse 16, I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. If you have come to know God, and you have come to be in the ministry, the first thing is to know what you must suffer. What you must suffer for God. What you must suffer. To stay in a room and pray from morning to evening may be difficult and may be more difficult than walking out uh, and chatting with everybody, socializing. But it may be the suffering that you are to go through. That may be all. But you will be surprised that it will take a toll on you. To ride in a motorcycle rather than a car. Or to ride a bicycle rather than to ride a motorbike. Or to walk rather than to drive. Maybe all that will be required of you. Today's city Christians are prepared to do very little. But I want to tell you, especially all of us who are young enough to hear, there is nothing like God is calling you without suffering. Yeah. So where you see that we cannot pray for a long time, you cannot fast, you cannot go somewhere and be somewhere for God. You got a problem. There are various sufferings that uh, we have to go through. So get ready. Get ready. Uh, I wish I could pray for you that you will not suffer. But the greater the calling, the greater the suffering. It says, I will show him what things he has to suffer for my sake. So when Jesus said, take up in 16 verse 24, if any man will come after me, let him take up his cross. That means that he has to take up humility because the cross speaks of humility. Let him take up obedience because the cross speaks of obedience. 
Let him take up suffering. Let, he should embrace it. He should hold it. Let him take up shame. Let him take up bad experiences. Embrace it. It's part of ministry. I will show you how great things he must suffer. I, I, like the, that's the first thing. Is what you will suffer. Hey. When Paul was speaking about the fact that he was an apostle, he said the signs of an apostle, the signs, the signs of an apostle were wrought in me. What is the first sign? Patience. That word means constancy. Constancy. Constant but with C and Y. It's not a name, it's, 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 it's a word. Constant. You go through, you go through, you are still persisting in whatever God has for you. I'm ready to survive. I'm ready to suffer. I'm ready to go through. I'm ready to experience whatever the style of variety or variation of suffering God has chosen for me. I'm ready for it. Rejecting suffering is rejecting your doorway into the next level. I said to reject suffering is to reject your door to the next level. If you offer people, so God wants you to work for him. Oh, really? Where? At um, a sin, whatever. <laughs> uh, my mother... My father, my grandmother, my husband, my friend. No, but when I, when I say it's a special package to Ontario, Canada. Last week I, I showed some people Canada. You should have seen the crowd. If I had announced a sin man so. Or I had announced another far place which is not even so far you would have seen people will knock because they are rejecting any possible difficulty of suffering of any type or what they perceive to be and when you reject that you reject your door because the bible says that through much tribulation through much tribulation we must enter. That means that tribulation is a door. Acts 14, 22. Tribulation is a door. It's a door through which you go higher. It's a door through which you learn war. It's a door through which you get to the next level. And as people reject it, they keep on re rejecting the door to the next thing that God has for them. So, dear friend, you can never, never, never say that you reject the cross. You have to accept whatever variety of suffering God has chosen for you. Maybe your suffering will be to make a big sacrifice of money or of a house or a car or something or even just a privilege that you say, oh, no, thank you. Rejection is a type of suffering that you never know is suffering until you experience it. Rejection. 
When James McEwan came to Ghana in 1937 or so, he immediately had malaria. And you see, malaria is something that had killed so many people. But by that time, the church which he was part of, apostolic, had reached a point where they had also come to believe in miracles. And they did not believe in going to the doctor. So, James McKeown also believed in healing, but not to that extreme. But as he lay in as a man, Kesey dying, somebody reported it to the British commissioner who was based at Chebi, Kibi, that this British man has just come and he's dying. So the, the commissioner who was in charge of that area organized a car or organized something and transported him from Asamankese to European hospital. Do you know European hospital? Rich hospital. Rich hospital. Yes. Yes. European hospital. And within a few days, he was okay. But because of that, the church rejected him. Yes. They said, no, we don't, we don't need you. He doesn't, he doesn't have power. He doesn't believe in miracles. So he had to leave that, that church. And then he moved to Winneba. Yeah. To start all over again. Yes. That, but that was the beginning of more troubles. Are you listening to me? Oh, yes. You see, the type of suffering, he, his, the suffering that he experienced, he didn't die from it. In fact, in 1982, he told them, it's enough. I've done my best. I'm, I'm living. I feel I don't feel well. I don't feel normal. I don't feel whatever. So he left, he, le he handed over the church of Pentecost to then uh, appointed somebody and left. And when he came back, he came back again to visit in 1984. Yeah. But that was the last time. He never came again. 1989, 4th of May, he went home to be with the Lord. Yeah. A great man. In 1988, the Lord had anointed me and said to me, from today you can teach. Yes. Yes. It was less than a year. He was, no, he was no more there. He went through fires. I don't know the type of suffering, but once God has called you, you must know that, look, as for suffering, you, will su you are not called to a life of, like, just happiness. Uh, we are happy. No, but you see, we, we, we are suffering with joyfulness. You see, that's why Colossians 1.1 1, 1 says that, and the Lord strengthen you with might according to his glorious power unto all patience with long suffering and joyfulness. It goes with the joyfulness. Long suffering is a word longanimity. Longanimity. Longus. Longus and animity, animated, animated, full of life. Long, full of life. Stays long, full of life. Long, animity. Strengthen according to his glorious power 
and to all patience, which is constancy, constancy and suffering for a long time, enduring for a long time with joyfulness. That we, it doesn't mean that we are not we are not going to have a concert or we are not going to rejoice. Or, no. <laughs> but if you think that there is no struggle and suffering in God and in Christ, you come to the wrong place. The higher the calling, the more there's the suffering. Different kinds of sufferings. When James McEwan traveled abroad for vacation. He had a pastor called J.A.C. Anaman. He put him in charge. Oh, yes. And when he traveled one time, the animal took over eh, and said that James McEwan is out and that he is now the one, the new chairman of the church. It wasn't called Pentecost, it was called something apostolic of Ghana, something. Yeah. He took over and ousted McEwan. As he had traveled. Huh? Are you listening to the story? You see, there are different types of... So when he came back, he was able to reverse it. Yes, but that was not the end of the troubles. Some laymen, a group of them, they came together and they said, no, that time Ghana had just had independence and they came with the slant, white man, black man, that, you know, things in Ghana must be run by indigents. You know what is indigent? Bring it on the thing because I read that word in the book, indigents. We have a right to manage our own affairs. Yes. Independence has just happened. We have a right to manage our own affairs. So they created trouble for him and intensified the issues and escalated the matter to the level of the government. Yes. Church issues. And when it got to the highest, it got to the highest level, I think the minister of, it got to the minister of education and whatever, so they set up the Blay Commission, the Blay Commission, to look into James McEwan. Huh? I'm talking about sufferings. So when they set up the Blay Commission, the Blay Commission came up with a report. Organized by a sect after Anaman had tried to overthrow him, it, 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 it overthrew him back. Then these people also came with another way. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Some group of lay people, God forbid that lay, lay people will do that. Hey, then they set up the Black The Black Commission came up with the report. Do you know what the Black Commission said? The Black Commission said that. They have found adverse findings against James McEwan and that they recommend that he should be deported from Ghana. Yes. You see, he was the focus, just like Moses was the focus. He was the focus of the attack. They wanted him out. So they sent it to Kwame Nkrumah, who has just become a president, for Kwame Nkrumah to sign the deportation order. Hey. 
So just as they were about to sign the deportation order, another group also came together. And the group that wanted Makiwon to go came to demonstrate at Flagstaff House. This Flagstaff House. They came to demonstrate there. And then another group that didn't want James Makiwon to be deported also came to demonstrate. They were all at the gates. Yes. And somebody who knew the chief security officer of Kwame Nkrumah made a way to, to tell the person that what these people are doing is not right. So they were all waiting for Kwame Nkrumah to deport or not to deport, to sign. Charlie, people are wicked. Though. Like you have made a, a, a report that the man should be deported. The founder of the Church of Pentecost. Yes. His life, he has been there, giving, I mean, traveling, working. Hey, people are liars and wicked. Oh. You may not have a cross, but it's a type of suffering. Then Kwame Nkrumah came out and said that he will not sign the deportation and the one condition that the name of the church must be changed from apostolic to another name. So then they chose the name Church of Pentecost. You will not clap for uh, 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 the right thing. Osajifu, Kwame Nkrumah. Oh, yes. 1962, then the name came. 1962. Then we had Church of Pentecost. So he continued to labor and to work in Ghana and built this church that we see. He was a man of discipline. So he would dismiss people organize the church, doing meetings, and me traveling, working. They never had a child. Different kinds of suffering. Never had a child. So he took all the Africans as his children. Never had a child. I'm explaining to you that there's nothing like Christianity without suffering. And the greater the calling, various things are assigned. You would think that it is like natural or it is something that is just happening but it is spiritual and today where are all these people where is Anaman where is the Blair Commission where are all these people where are the people that wanted to deport him where are the organizers of all this trying to create like is he's a white man we know we need our own a black governing this whatever fantastic all I'm saying today is that there are different types of suffering. Galatians 2.20. I've almost finished preaching. Oh, yes. What again do you want to hear? Hmm? Those of you online, remember, different kinds of suffering. And I, want, I thank God for the, many of the people in America. You know, maybe they, 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 they are, I mean, our church members. Many of them have sacrificed to build churches. Maybe they may not be on the field doing it, but another way of making an offering to the Lord. Amen. Are you still around? Hmm. crucified with Christ. Everybody say, I am crucified with Christ. Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Oh, yes. You see, when you take up your cross and you embrace your suffering, you, you, you enter into a new life. A new life that is, you see, he said, nevertheless, I live. 
Look, look, this is a very famous verse. Rejoiner had a vision and he saw this verse. The Lord, told, he, he took him to a mount. He said, you are on the level of Galatians 2.20. It helps me always to remember this verse. He was up in the mountain in the vision to the level of Galatians 2.20. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. Now, the life which I now live, you see, the life which I now live in the flesh, you will never experience the life you would have actually lived. You see, my life that I would have lived, that I'm living now, that's not the life I would have lived if I have not embraced my cross. I had to embrace my suffering and my cross to experience a life that I'm living. He said, that, look at it, the, he said, the life that I now live. You see, he's still alive. The life I now live in the flesh. You see, we have two options. A life you live in the flesh, following the, accepting the suffering, or another life you live in the flesh, which has nothing to do with suffering. It's like an original life. But there is a higher and a greater life. If you embrace the cross, you have a different life, I promise you, altogether. If you embrace the cross of Jesus Christ. The life I now live. The life I now live. The life I now live. The life I now live, I live by the grace of God, by the faith of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. The life I now live, the life I'm living now, is a different life. Yes. You see, if you don't embrace fasting, you don't embrace prayer, you don't embrace missionary work, you don't embrace obedience, you don't embrace even tithing, you don't embrace even giving offering. Anything that has any kind of pinch on you. You don't embrace putting aside pornography, fornication, adultery. You don't embrace leaving behind drugs and smoking and all these things. You are not going to see a certain life that is actually intended for you to live. The life I now live. The life I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of God. Of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's why you can't stop fornicating. Because you are not prepared to suffer. Are you still around or you are, you, you are leaving? Oh yes. Lift your hand and say I'm crucified with Christ. The life I now live. Say the life I now live. Some of you can't even take an Uber to come to church. But you can take three buses to go to Paga to go and visit a boyfriend from Burkina Faso. Three buses. Accra, Kumasi, Kumasi, Tamale, Tamale, Paga. To meet your boyfriend who is coming from Wagadugu to meet you at the border to go and sleep in the hotel at Paga and look at crocodiles in the afternoon. <laughs> Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world I've sucked the world from my life through the cross and the suffering of Jesus Christ I've sucked the world I have had me I have hardly any worldly friend I don't, I don't, I don't know people in the world the world is crucified to me the world is crucified. Some of you, you did. The world is near you. The world is near you. The world is in your room. He <laughs> said, "By whom the world is crucified unto me, and I am also crucified unto the world. The world who don't see me." Come.
come to church on Sunday and you are grooving in the nightclub with a man you don't know his name and you are grooving and smooching in the nightclub with somebody you don't know his name how do you find your way to the world how do you have all these worldly friends show me your friend I'll show you your character so Paul said that, you see by the cross and when you embrace the sufferings and the, the crucifixion, the cross of Jesus, the world dies to you. Goodbye, world. Goodbye, world. Is that a song like that? Goodbye, world. I stay no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasures of sin. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go that way. The rest of my life, I made up my mind to go God's way. The rest of my life, Amen. God forbid. Tell your neighbor, God forbid, God forbid that I should glory saving the cross of Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified to me, and I am crucified to the world. I sucked the world for my life. Stand to your feet, everybody. Stand to your feet, everybody. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm crucified with Christ. God forbid that I should glory saving the cross of Jesus Christ. Listen. Embrace suffering. For a young lady whose heart has followed a deceptive man who has charmed you beyond the level that you ever know and your heart has followed the man and your heart has gone to the man and you know I must lay this man on the altar and burn him to whom the world is crucified to me and I am crucified to the world. And a new life will begin. Say goodbye to the world. Say goodbye to the worldly boys, worldly girls, worldliness, worldly dressing, worldly places, worldly everything. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Goodbye worldly friends. Goodbye, worldly friends. God forbid that I should glory set in the cross of Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified to me and I am crucified to the world. Oh, what a great life God has planned for you if you only embrace the cross of Jesus Christ. Take up your cross and follow him. Deny yourself and follow him. Take up your cross. If any man come to me and hate not his brother, his sister, his father, his mother, his wife, his children, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. You cannot be a disciple except you embrace Lift your hand and commit yourself to God. Lord, we are ready to suffer whatever is necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus, we praise you and we thank you. We love you. And we give you glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Bless everyone as we gather here and as we are in your presence with the grace put your hand on your heart as you embrace the cross pray to God for a moment yourself Lord I'm ready to follow and embrace whatever suffering and any experience however you, however you choose Lord I'm ready to embrace that level of suffering for your name's sake for tribulation is a door to your life and to your ministry. 
Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. And for somebody here, even to say sorry is like a big sacrifice to you. Okay, then say sorry so that you may embrace the cross. Father, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. If you are here and you want to give your life to Jesus, maybe somebody invited you to church today. Lift up your right hand. I'm going to pray with you right now. Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to Jesus. God bless you. Lift it up high. Father, thanks, Amelia, for your blessing that you give to us, for everyone who is giving their life to Jesus. If you are here today, Jesus is stretching out his hand to you. He says, come to me, all ye that labor. Come and take the cross and suffer for Jesus Christ. If you are here like that, wherever you are, lift your hand and come to me. I'm counting up to three. If you are here, I will pray with you. We want to give your life to Jesus. Alright. Let us pray. Say this prayer. Those of you who are in the front, say this prayer with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, Please forgive me for my sins. I give my life to God. Have mercy on me. I can't hear you say, have mercy on me. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. Make me a new person. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. I receive Jesus as my Savior and my Lord. Please write my name. In the book of life. In Jesus name. I humble myself. And I take Jesus. As my savior. And my Lord. I put everything on the altar. And I sacrifice everything for Jesus. Thank you Lord. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Yeah. Hello. Hello. What's your name? Yes. Huh? Kezia. Listen, today is the beginning of a new life for you. Okay? God God has a has marked you. And God God is going to bless you, but you see you have to turn around, really turn around. You must turn around. You understand around turn? Yeah, turn around completely and walk away from everything. And follow Jesus. Kezia, are you listening to me? All right. God bless you. Go this way, please. Go this way. Oh, put your hands together. There's power here, I tell you. There's power here. God is blessing people. God is saving people. In Jesus' name. Take your communion. The body of Jesus Christ. May this bring you much healing and deliverance. The body of Jesus. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Now the blood. Now listen. God has shown me some people you are in prison but he told me that you are going to be let out of prison and redeployed. You see how in Russia they release prisoners to go to war. Oh yes. Somebody here or watching me you are coming out of jail. I see you being set free by the blood of the Lamb. Walk free. Walk free from all your mistakes and your sins. The blood of Jesus Christ. Mm. 
Lift your hands for your blessing. May multiplied blessings come upon you. May you walk free from every chain, every imprisonment, and every confinement. You are set free by the blood of the Lamb. The Lord bless you. And the Lord make his face to shine on you. Every anger of the Lord towards you is ended. May you now experience the joy and the pleasure and the favor of the Lord. I see somebody here. You are supposed to die. Put, everybody put your hand on your head. Any death that is approaching you in the name of Jesus we cancel the spirit of death and every appointment with death in the name of Jesus be delivered be delivered be set free in the name of Jesus Christ may you be delivered from every appointment with death in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for the grace. Thank you for the help. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, be blessed. Right now, put your hand on your heart. May every disease in you be healed. I pray for healing for you. Healing, healing, healing from every disease. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I want to ask that people that are outside should be in. I see a lot of people outside ushering. Can you ensure that there's nobody on the street, not even one soul? Nobody, just take your seats if, you, if there's a seat. We have 6,000 chairs, please. I believe you should be able to find a, a chair. And you see, we are expanding the hall because we want to have 8,000 chairs at least downstairs. Yes. So, huh? Yes, but I'm, I'm, I'm just interested. Upstairs people are some way, so I, I'm more concerned about downstairs. My soul is downstairs. Lift up and listen. Now, some of us must make the sacrifice. And we must have sacrifice Sunday where we come with a special sacrifice and offering to the Lord. Amen. Are you ready for a special sacrifice? Amen. Lift your offering up. Father, thank you as we present this offering to you today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for this blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. And then now, before you do that, take out, because of space, there's no space. When you move once, it becomes difficult to move again. So take out a booster. I know you've already given your offering. You are not even expecting to give another thing, but I want you to give a booster. Yes. What is a booster? A booster is 49% and you need what? 1% and you are a chartered accountant. Huh. May the Lord do it for you. Maybe you are a very beautiful lady, but you just need somebody to say, this is a good person. Because these days, the brothers... These days, the brothers, they don't trust just beauty. Brothers, do you trust beauty? No. Brothers don't just trust beauty. Say, oh, you're beautiful, but oh, you're, oh, you're dangerous. The beauty and the beast. So these days, brothers don't just trust beauty. They are wary. Amen. Father, thank you as we sow. Take out your booster. I see somebody this week. Something small will happen. It will make a difference. In Jesus' name.
Bless us, O Lord, as we sow our seed today. In Jesus' name, amen. Rush to the front and put your offering in and rush back to your seat. God bless you. Oh yeah, those of you online, I see almost 1,500 people online. God bless you for joining and um, you can give. Hello, hello. God bless you for joining. You can also give online. No, not that you can give. You are expected to give because you, you are on church online. You get what I'm saying? So give your offering and it's going to be a blessing. Don't just sit in your office and just be looking or sit in your house and looking. Give your offering. God is going to bless you mightily. Wherever you are, it's a real blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. Now, we're going to Wow. No, no. Just me. I see some buildings being dedicated also. I see a building called Paribu 2. Paribu. No, no. Paribu Tabu. Paribu Tabu. All right. Paribu Tabu in the northern region of Ghana. Financed by Lady Pastor Kathy Okran and Revival International, Essex, Maryland, USA. Thanking God that His grace has found us. May this same grace find others too. God bless you. Lady Pastor Catherine. Oh, look at your church you built. Glory be to God. Put your hands together for this amazing church building being dedicated. Number 462 out of 500 buildings. Wow. And that is the Bishop Ampofo dedicating this church in the northern region of Ghana. And then the next church, the next one is Paligibini. 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 Alright. And this one was financed by Mr. Eben and Mrs. Brenda Addo. Raleigh Church, North Carolina, USA, in honor of our parents, Mr. and Mrs. Justice and Susanna Addo, stroke Mr. and Mrs. Bernard and Tina Ofori. God bless you all for this amazing, great work you are doing. Amen. Paligbini Church, a road is being developed right by Paligbini in the northern region of Ghana. And that is the Archbishop cutting the ribbon and is building the poshest building in the area. Yes, it's our church building, Balibini. All right, that is amazing. And another building called Sakai. All right, you can build if you want to be Sakai. What is wrong with Sakai? Okay. It's a special name, Sakai. Financed by the children, Ghana UK and USA in loving memory of Comfort Ampiwa Hajj Hajj and Emilia Theodora Brown amazing 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 amen and then this is Sakai as you can see roads are being built in the whole nation alright the reason why we know it's a road is because you can see that go back you can see the electricity pole, they go by the roads. The, the, the electric line goes on the side of the roads. So that helps you to know that it's a road that is developing. All right? Beautiful. Hmm. And it's being dedicated by Bishop Patrick Bruce. Beautiful. And the last one for today is Banu. Banu. Banu in the Upper West region. Wow. Finance to the glory of God. First Samuel 18, 17. Only be a valiant man for me and fight the Lord's battle. First Love Church, Accra, Ghana. First Love Church. I'm sure you were part of this First Love Church project. Amen. 
All right. Right. Now, we are going to begin our short concert. This is a very short concert. And um, that's a great blessing. Amen.